and you're now with the Forerunner Chronicles. All right, everybody, listen up. In his latest flurry of politically polished right-hand jabs in the high-stakes Obamni skirmish, you know the political conflict between Obama and Romney, presidential candidate Mitt Romney, in an attempt to capitalize on the insanely obnoxious left-wing tactics of President Obama, has now gone so far right that he's dead wrong. And when I say dead wrong, I mean dead wrong. Because in a recent article that was released in The Telegraph, Mitt Romney stated that the separation of church and state has been taken too far in America and religion should be restored in the public life. You heard what I said. But to be fair, he also stated in that article, the founders proscribed the establishment of a state religion, but did not give countenance to the elimination of religion from the public square. Now that may sound all good and well to the untrained ear. However, what you're getting ready to hear next, it can't sound good to anyone. The attack on religious freedom is definitely not the USA or the land of the free that we were born and raised in. And I would really like to hear what you have to say about, about that. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> religious liberty, our first freedom of those enumer enumerated in the Bill of Rights. And, and the president and his administration said they are going to usurp your religious freedom by demanding that you provide products to your employees, if you're the Catholic Church, that violate your own conscience. And so whether it's a, a, a Catholic business person or the Catholic Church itself, they're being told what they have to do that violates their religious conscience. That attack on religious freedom, I think, is a, is a dangerous and unfortunate precedent. And I know we're not all Catholic in this room. Many presumably are. But I feel that we're all Catholic today. But I feel that we're all Catholic today. But I feel that we're all Catholic today. All right, so let me get this straight here. The Catholic Church is under fire from the American government because they want to give out contraceptives in their health care system. I can understand that. I'm actually kind of, it doesn't even make a difference, but this is a religious liberty issue. And because this is a religious liberty issue, Every American citizen should now consider themselves or think of themselves as Catholics. That's like saying one plus one equals six, six, six. Now you can laugh, but that's actually what all of this is adding up to. Because what Mitt Romney said, it makes no sense. I've listened to that statement at least a jillion times now, if there's such a number. And believe me, even when you know the proper context in which he made that statement, it still doesn't sound right. Why do we all have to be Catholics now? Because we want to maintain religious liberty in America? Because we want to see freedom of conscience continue to flourish in the USA? We should all now think ourselves to be Catholics if we're citizens in this country? What's next? We should all get behind the papacy and help the Pope push his agenda here in the United States of America? You know, this brazen statement of blasphemy on the part of Mitt Romney, this wasn't some impromptu off-the-cuff statement. This was a well-placed move on the political chessboard to garner the support of the Catholic Church and the Evangelical Church here in the USA. And what I don't get is this. Evangelicals, you're Protestants. And Protestants, by definition, are those that protest against the Catholic Church. Although many people have forgotten that definition by now, that is still the definition of a Protestant. And Evangelicals do fall under that category of Protestants. So why would a Protestant, an evangelical, even find the whole concept of we are all Catholics now in any shape, form, or fashion appealing? Well, you know, I think John Hagee, the pastor of the 19,000 plus cornerstone megachurch and the founder and chairperson of the Christian Zionist organization, Christians United for Israel, and one of the foremost voices in the evangelical movement, has a very interesting statement to make on this in a blanket email that he sent out recently entitled John Hagee on Obama. Take a listen to this. In Pastor John Hagee's blanket email entitled Pastor John Hagee on Obama, he stated, first, I want to express my profound appreciation to President Barack Obama for doing what all of the Republican candidates have not been able to do for months. He unified the Bible-believing church in America in one week over the issue of abortion. When the president ordered the Catholic Church to provide contraceptives to prevent the birth of new life, 
he hit a nerve in the heart of every true Catholic and evangelical. By now, I hope you're beginning to realize exactly what's going on because it's something like Isaac Newton's third law of motion. You know, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And that law of motion, it's not only applicable to moving physical objects, because if you think about it, those principles also apply to moving social ideologies within society as well. I mean, think about it for a minute. If you can move the moral pendulum of society so far to the left due to issues like contraceptives, abortion, or same-sex marriages, then eventually, but inevitably, that very same moral pendulum of society will then move so far to the right, and I mean so far to the right, that society will go right out of its God-given mind. However, in the midst of all of the mayhem, there will be various entities, factions, or organizations that will begin to unite, which would have never united under normal circumstances. You know, I think the Freemasons have a term for that in Latin. It's called ordo ab chao. In simple English, that simply means order out of chaos. Do you think it may be possible that for the last four years, our current administration has been working feverishly in Washington to develop a system of chaos that would not simply sacrifice the physical lives of millions, but rather sacrifice the great morals of this once great nation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to wake up because what you may not be realizing is that the devil has been able to so efficiently use President Obama and this current administration that they've been able to pull off a feat that the Pope and all of his bishops could not pull off in two lifetimes over. This administration, due to pushing various issues like abortion, like same-sex marriage, etc., have now brought about a situation in which the devil has been able to change the image of the Roman Catholic Church in America so that now the citizens of this country no longer view the Catholic Church as one of the biggest covens of the world's most notorious pedophiles amongst many other evils but now as the new champion of religious liberty in our modern day times? Are you kidding me? The Roman Catholic Church isn't the champion of anything but the devil. Because this religious juggernaut, this religious entity is covertly salivating, waiting for its opportunity to once again regain the reins of global supremacy. It is nothing close to being a bulwark of religious liberty because the Bible has told us clearly that this is the entity identified in the book of Daniel chapter 7 as the Antichrist power. Matter of fact, in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25, it is identified as being the little horn power that would think not only to change times and laws, but would also make war with the saints of God. And this entity did just that because it did think to change times and laws. Matter of fact, the Roman Catholic Church changed the second commandment. Matter of fact, it didn't change the second commandment. It got rid of that commandment altogether. The commandment that forbids the worshiping of graven images. That's why you can go into any Catholic edifice and find a multitude of graven images. Not only that, but this antichrist power, the papacy, also thought to change times and laws in a very marked fashion when it sought to abrogate God's fourth commandment, which is the only commandment that is a law that is defined or confined to a specific time period. For we are told in the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thine gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Which day? The seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The seventh day out of all of the other days in creation is the only day that God gave a proper name to. And that name is the Sabbath day. And that is clearly proven in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2 verses 1, 2, and 3. The Sabbath day, the seventh day is the only day out of all the other days of creation that God blessed and sanctified. Not the first day, not the third day, not the fourth or the fifth, but the seventh day. That means God blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it, meaning he set it aside for holy use 
to be a benefit to humanity that we might not get caught up in the cares of this life, but remember that we were made by the God of the universe. And it is him and him alone that deserves our homage. And what God blesses and sanctifies, no man can overthrow. And no man, no matter what he calls himself, unholy father, has the ability to bless or sanctify anything, not even a sandwich. But the Pontifus Maximus, Emperor Constantine the Great, led out the Holy Roman Church, the unholy Roman Church, in the year 321 AD. Mark that year. In that year, they sought to overthrow God's seventh-day Sabbath by establishing Sunday, the first day of the week, as the new Christian day of rest. That's right, it's in the history books. We're talking about a church that has a rap sheet deeper than the deficit of the United States of America. We're talking about the same papal power that is responsible for hunting down God's woman, God's church, for 1,260 prophetic days in the book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 6. For a prophetic time, times, and dividing of time in Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 14. And for a prophetic 42 months in the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 5. And all of these prophetic time periods add up to a literal 1,260 literal days, no, literal years. Because this time period began in the year 538 AD and spanned it all the way through 1798 AD. And during this 1,260 year time period, the papacy hunted down God's people. Over 50 million Christians, women and children included, were sent to bloody graves. We're talking about the same papacy that during this time period unleashed its savage Jesuit order that would take pregnant women and slice open their wombs and take out their unborn children and crush their heads against the walls if these women wouldn't recant. Yeah, that's right. The Pope and his bishops, they're not for abortion. They're only for slaying anything moving that will not submit its conscience to the Pope. And Mitt Romney and John Hagee, they're not the only ones pushing this papal propaganda. But earlier this year in the Washington Post, Glenn Beck released an article entitled, Why We Are All Catholic Now. Listen to the sentiments that he expressed in this article shortly after his return from a visit to the Vatican. Much earlier this year in the month of February, Glenn Beck released this article in the Washington Post entitled, Why We Are All Catholics Now. He wrote this article shortly after his return from a visit to the Vatican. This is what he had to say in the article. I am a proud member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but today I call myself a Catholic. Why? because the state is telling the Catholic Church to violate its principles and teachings. So, if you are a person of faith, you must call yourself a Catholic.